you're going to struggle after just a week of doing this. You're going to burn out mainly just because of a bad sleep schedule. Hi, it's Marcus. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge and a recent IB graduate. In this video, I'm going to set out seven goals that you should be keeping in mind when spending the last month before IB exams. Goal one, get anything else out of the way. If you're still working on your extended essay, internal assessments, or anything else that isn't directly exam related, you should get this done as soon as you can. These are really massive pieces of work, and they are worth more than you think. So make sure that any coursework, whatever subject it may be, is totally out of the way. Similarly, make sure that your applications to university or college are totally complete. You do not want to be having to deal with this stuff during your exam period. You want to be able to focus on what you need to do for your exams. So goal two is to stay healthy physically. It's really easy to just drop whatever sports you're doing and be like, I don't have time for this. I fell into this trap, massively reducing the number of hours of tennis I was playing. I was missing trainings, not playing tournaments, and generally just not doing the things that I really love doing. However, when I did go to tennis, it, it felt great. I had my blood pumping, I was able to sweat, I was able to let out all of my frustrations, as well as just get the endorphins circulating, which feels great. Going to tennis actually helped me stay on top of my work because on the days that I did have tennis, I would have something to look forward to at the end of the day. I would need to finish the work I needed to do that day before tennis, and this made sure I was both efficient and using the time I had to the best of my ability. Also, doing exercise just makes me feel like less of a potato. Whenever I don't do exercise, I just sort of get restless, and this kills productivity. It'll also help you eat better because exercise fuels your appetite, as well as help you sleep better. Goal three is to figure out when and how much work you can do each day. You need to figure out when you work best in a way that is both sustainable and productive. If you work best at night, but then you try to pull an all-nighter every other day, this isn't going to work. You're going to struggle after just a week of doing this. You're going to burn out mainly just because of a bad sleep schedule. If you know that you do work best at night, maybe try to wake up around 9 or 10, do a couple of hours of work, go to lunch, maybe go on a run or a walk, then do some work in the afternoon, and then try to have an early dinner. This is so that you can have a period of five or six hours in which you can do really deep work, where you will get the majority of the work done for that day after dinner, while still being able to sleep at a reasonable hour. Whereas if you have dinner at a later time, such as 10 or 11 p.m., then if you try to work after that, you're just going to go to bed at a totally horrible time and mess up your sleep schedule. However, if you are a morning person, then you can do the majority of your deep work in the morning, say from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Then you can take a break after lunch, maybe do some sports, go see some friends, something like that. Then you can do a little bit of work in the afternoon, go have dinner, and maybe chill a bit and have an early night. It's really important to figure out when you work best and then stick to making sure that period of time is where you get the majority of the vital work done. If you do high quality work during this period of time, this will yield the best results while still giving you time to relax and do other things. Goal four is don't burn out. The best way to not burn out is to set yourself a realistic goal in the form of a schedule. Do not schedule and try to work 14 hours a day. This is not sustainable. Remember, you can't cram for everything in the IB. IB exams are long and grueling, and there's a lot of content you need to learn. If you try to cram for four weeks, then your well-being will suffer and you will not get the grades that you deserve. If you make sure to pace yourself and start studying as soon as reasonably possible, of course, once your extended essay and IAs are all out of the way, this is a great way to just avoid burnout. Goal five is to create a flexible timetable. If you just make a timetable and have every hour planned out for the next four weeks, it just won't work. You need to prioritize, figure out what you need to be working on at any given day, and then create the timetable as you go along. You should only really be planning ahead two or three days. It's really helpful to have a flexible timetable that you can change around depending on how much you need to work on one topic or another, or whether you need to have a spontaneous day to go see your grandfather or something. In this timetable, you also need to schedule in time to take breaks, take walks, and things like that. Otherwise, it will just be too much and you'll feel demoralized because you won't be achieving everything that you set forth for yourself. Goal six is to make your work rewarding. The way motivation works is essentially you need rewards to be motivated. And we can use this idea to trick our brains into having more motivation to do things like work. You can do this in two ways. Firstly, you can associate work with a reward like chocolate. For example, you, I don't know, eat a block of chocolate whenever you finish a math question. 
Secondly, you can make the work itself rewarding. If you set yourself goals and you achieve them, then you feel good about achieving these goals. Maybe you can even tell your parents or your friends that you achieved something and you managed to get 70% on that paper. This means the next time you're doing work, this work is a rewarding experience because you're working towards something. Particularly as you learn more and improve and you get better grades, then this progression will actually feel rewarding and it'll make motivation so much easier. Use this to your advantage, make your work rewarding, make yourself enjoy the work and motivation will come. Goal seven is to do loads of past paper questions and track your progress. So what I did in my exams was I found question banks which had a load of past paper questions by topic. This allowed me to really dissect out the different topics that I found hardest and easiest. And tracking this helped me know which ones I should be focusing on. So this has a bunch of purposes. Firstly, you know where you are with each topic. You know which topics you find the easiest, which are the hardest, and which don't really have many questions, so you can kind of just ignore. This will help you with generating your flexible timetable. Understanding where you're at with each topic will help you structure your revision to best fit what you need most work in, thereby targeting your work to the stuff you know least well. Secondly, you practice the same sorts of questions as the exam. It allows you to both encode things in the same context as the exam, as well as do active recall two strategies which are scientifically proven to really boost your memory. Finally, doing these questions allows you to find gaps in your knowledge and then fill in these gaps as needed. This is important if you want to make your studying more efficient and targeted. Ultimately, how you study and how you choose to spend your time is up to you. But if you take into account the seven goals I outlined for you, I really believe these can help you boost your grades in your IB exams. These are things I really wish I knew before approaching my school exams, so I hope they're valuable for you. The main conclusion of my video is that IB exams are really tough. The exam period is stressful and you have so many exams packed into such a short amount of time. This makes it a really stressful period. So make sure to be as healthy and as well prepared as possible before this period starts to make sure you get the grades that you deserve. Finally, just a note, remember that IB exams are not the end of it all. They might determine whether you get into one college or university or another, but ultimately achieving one grade over another isn't going to matter that much in the long run. These are just exams that you need to do to move on to the next step of your life. So don't stress if during this period before exams, it feels like everything is crumbling around you. And I assure you, you will figure it out. If you found that video valuable, then consider subscribing and make sure to check out my other videos, particularly this one here on whether I thought the IB was worth it.